Thank you, Mary, and good morning, everyone. In all the world, only Australia can lay claim to having the world's longest continuous living cultures. Here in the city of Melbourne, we acknowledge the elders past and present of the Boon and the Woiwurrung Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And we thank them for nurturing this country for more than 2,000 generations. We know at the City of Melbourne that we must do more to celebrate and embed our Aboriginal culture into modern Melbourne as we build it together. We want to say thank you to Uncle Dave, our elder from the Wurrung Wurundjeri people uh, for that wonderful welcome to country and leadership on what we're experiencing on climate change. Well, welcome to all of the distinguished guests, speakers and citizens uh, to Town Hall for this summit over the next two days. We're very excited. Sadly and inescapably, our conversations here and nationally will be shaped to a great degree by the savage summer bushfires, still burning in so many places across our country. I visited East Gippsland last Friday and saw with my own eyes the devastations of towns, forests and bushland. Entire ecosystems and buildings destroyed, lives lost. The rebuilding, of course, is never just physical. These communities are shattered. And now we have floods. All of us here today, and increasingly, thankfully, a vast majority of Australians recognise that strong, immediate action on climate change is necessary to protect our economy, our environment, and our way of life. As they say, there are no jobs on a dead planet. A transition is underway globally, and Australia must not allow itself to be left behind. Today and tomorrow, we have a chance to hear from so many eminent and experienced speakers on what we can be doing to create change. In our own patch here in the city of Melbourne, our climate policies have evolved over two decades. Last year, as Mary said, we declared a climate and biodiversity emergency. We were the 1,371st city around the world to do so. There's no question that we have a responsibility to our community to act, and we want to make sure that we can survive the worst of climate change shocks. But we also realise that we need to embrace the economic opportunities that spring from innovation and technological response to climate change. So often, economic opportunity can increase the pace of momentum. Melbourne's own council operations were certified, certified as carbon neutral in 2012 and Dr Cathy Oak had a huge amount to do with that. We are ple pleased to say that we use 100% renewable e electricity throughout the city of Melbourne as a result of the Melbourne Renewable Energy Project pioneered at the city of Melbourne and led by our Deputy Lord Mayor, who's standing right at the back, that's why I'm pointing there. We've also cut our emissions by 53% since 2013. But this horrendous summer shows us that we must do a great deal more and next week councillors will be considering a zero emissions target by 2040 for our entire municipality. We know that cities are doing a lot, but they can't do everything. We need our federal government particularly to help with the heavy lifting. We know that we want to have a cohesive and coordinated approach to reaching our Paris Agreement commitments by 2050 or before. I am delighted to be standing here today with a tenacious and relentless champion on environment and climate change, our City of Melbourne councillor, Dr. Cathy Oak. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I firstly want to acknowledge um, our dear friend and, and leader and Wurundjeri elder, Uncle Dave. Um, I echo what he was saying, that if, we're, if there's any voice that we need to listen to in our cities, 
It's that of the longest living culture anywhere in the world. If you want to hear and learn about resilience, we need to speak to our First Nations in all of our cities and all of our towns. And I really acknowledge the work that Uncle Dave has been doing in putting a real focus on the biodiversity emergency. Bringing nature back to our cities is an important part of declaring an emergency, is acting not only on deep cuts to emissions, but also in bringing our ecosystems with us. So thank you, Uncle Dave, for your work in that space. I dropped my daughter at school this morning and I said something that I often say. I'm off to town hall to work with an amazing group of people who for many years have been dedicated to action on climate change. But today I was able to say that the Lord Mayor and Councillor Rees and Deputy Lord Mayor Aaron Wood are joining 2,000 people who are here to double down on our efforts to make sure that Melbourne, Australia is a better world not only for her but to all the kids that come after her and after her and after her. And so, <laughs> so if there's one thing that I know that I want, and I know the city of Melbourne wants, and the organisers, and I acknowledge the fabulous Luke Taylor and what he has achieved in bringing us all here today. If there's one thing that we need to do is know that declaring an emergency is not enough. We know that we, and the city of Melbourne next Tuesday will be voting on what we're going to do to accelerate, to mobilise the social and economic resources that we know we need to get to that transition. And that's next Tuesday. We're committed, hopefully, to, to vote on what we need to do, but you also are here to make sure that we all make that commitment, that we make deep change, accelerate that change, scale it up, um, and tell our leaders at the national level that they must also act accordingly. At the next climate negotiations at COP26, the United Nations Climate Change Conference, we must not be the fossil of the day like we were every day in Madrid. We must be... <laughs> We must be celebrated for actually joining the international community in doing what we need to do for climate change. And thank you so much for joining us on that journey. Thank you.